Brooklyn Independent Television. Neighborhood Beat is made possible with generous underwriting support from the Brooklyn Cyclones. Tickets are on sale now. For information, 718-507-TIXX or on the web at brooklyncyclones.com. The Cyclones are Brooklyn. Hello, and welcome to this special edition of Neighborhood Beat. In this episode, we're checking out Brooklyn's sweeter side with visits to Dewey's Candy Shop in Dumbo and the Raw Chocolate Love Kitchen in Bushwick. Then, we'll sample delicious old-fashioned egg creams at Brooklyn Pharmacy in Soda Fountain in Carroll Gardens before we eat custom cakes at Tina's Cake Fair in Canarsie. Mm, stay tuned. Brooklyn Bridge remains one of the most marvelous man-made structures and is especially iconic here in Dumbo. Initially designed by John Roebling and then his son Washington, the bridge was actually completed by Washington's wife Emily, who became the key engineer during her husband's illness. Catering to all types of confection lovers, Dewey's is an adorably quaint candy shop with a retro feel where you can find everything from licorice sticks to your favorite 80s era candy. Pop rocks, anyone? Dewey Oblonsky. It's a nickname that my father gave to me when I was a little, little girl. So it's uh, kind of like an ode to my dad, this whole vision, this whole place. It's uh, been an amazing ride. And how it all came about was I was actually unemployed and not wanting to go back to the corporate world. Was it a good time to reinvent myself and take on a new initiative? So a friend actually gave me the suggestion and I thought, what a great idea. Who doesn't love candy? It makes everybody happy. It's not any type of age. It's really like a psychographic. It's an emotion. I thought that would be a perfect idea. And there is not a better place than Dumbo. There's also 5,000 people that work down here. So, and not to mention the tourist influx. I had a vision in my mind of the assortment that I wanted, but this shop had to be designed. And I could not ever have done this without my dear friend Jeff Lee, who was the genius behind so much of Dewey's. The, you know, lollipop chandelier, the chocolate bar. Going back to then plugging in the assortment, I knew nostalgic. Candy was going to be absolutely the best because that's where you get the true emotion when people walk in. I mean, I can't tell you the number of customers that come in and say, I feel like a kid in the candy store. Another opportunity was really in bulk candy. You know, the gummies and sours. I wanted to again create an assortment that wasn't just for kids, but for adults too. So it's really a place for everybody. When I opened uh, New Year's Day, I just had rolled out of bed and there were people outside the store and I thought, I'm not open, but do you want a tour? And then I didn't close the door till nine o'clock that night. Anybody that walked in just gave a big thumbs up and it just made me so happy that I achieved what I set out to do and that was put a smile on everybody's face because candy makes everybody happy. So there's a couple different angles to events. I have done kids' birthday parties. I will do um, cocktail parties for adults. You know, the kids' parties are great. It's a very small, contained group. The kids go crazy when they walk in here. So they've loved the design. They love the assortment. They're so happy that the neighborhood has this because there's not a ton of let's say retro or old style candy stores you know it still has a modern flair to it but it just it takes you back to your childhood you know it just makes everybody's just been so happy so we're going to take a tour through dewey's and where our favorite spot is is more of a featured area so whether it's valentine's day easter or just some unique products that came in this is where it is 
Now this world is all the gummies and sours, a big, big world. So what you do at Dewey's is you grab a bag and then you grab a tongs or a scoop depending on what item you're picking up. And then we start looking for our favorites. And of course, we have gummy teeth, a must for everybody. And then another unique is the gummy letters. And then of course the traditional gummy bear, which nobody can live without. At Dewey's, all bulk is the same price. You can mix and match. The only two things that aren't are the Jelly Bellies and the individual color M&Ms. So when we move into, again, my favorite section, I'm just gonna return that, we go to the nostalgic. So whether it's your mega candy buttons that we all love and adore, your cow tails from way back when, or even your bottle caps. Everything from your old school nerds, as well as the uh, Whirly Pops. Uh, you love the sugar babies, and who could live without wax lips? Nobody. Of course, Big League Chew. Cannot keep this in stock. Jolly Ranchers, now chewable. All of these old nostalgia candies are the best to make everybody happy. So when we also look to newer and going again, strolling down memory lane, you have your good and plenty. We have so many different types of licorice. We have Finnish licorice, both black and red. We have jaw breakers that literally will break your jaw. They are huge and will take somebody a long time to eat. They're a big seller along with gumballs. We have sour in the center, larger scale gumballs, then of the traditional. If you remember the licorice laces, we have a red, a multi, and a black licorice. I'm gonna take you to the last section, which is one of my favorites. Now we're gonna go through my favorite section at Dewey's, and that is the candy toy section. Whether you're an old school Pez lover, we have a variety of the Disney characters, Thomas the, uh, the Train, anything. We love an old school Pez. What is really fascinating are these gummy hot dogs, gummy Krabby Patties, and gummy burgers. You can go very funky with the ever popular grills. And of course we have all these new great little uh, Wii remote control. Also, Hello Kitty is another huge, huge love of everybody. Well, that concludes our tour. Thank you so much for visiting Dewey's with me. Every building has its own story. This beautiful building behind me at 1396 Broadway was known as the Bushwick Theater when it opened on September 11th 1911. It was operated by Percy Williams as the Vaudeville Theater and then 1930 became an RKO movie theater until its closing in 1969. In 2004, it was renovated and is now home to the Acorn High School for Social Justice. Raw means unprocessed or left in its natural state. Love means affection or to cherish. Nice, right? We'll put that together with chocolate, and you've got raw chocolate love. And it doesn't get any better than that, my friends. I recently caught up with Shimon, the founder of this healthy confection, for a lesson and a taste. It's a beautiful day in Brooklyn. I am so excited to be here. I wish you were here, because it smells great. We're here with my new friend, Shimon who is the owner and founder of Raw Chocolate Love. Could you tell our viewers a little bit about what Raw Chocolate Love is? I would love to. I love Chocolata at first, you know? And um, it's really healthy. How are you saying that chocolate is healthy? I mean... Chocolate is very healthy. All chocolate that you find outside in stores basically is a little bit overheated so they can produce big amounts. What we work with Raw Chocolate Love it's all in raw form. The cacao, the cacao butter, all ingredients are super foods which is contain a lot of minerals and vitamins. We have the coconut, chili pepper, which is double love chocolate, goji berry, peanut butter, almond, espresso beans, 
flaxseed, which is source of omega-3. Today we're gonna make maybe like uh, three flavors from our 15 flavors in raw chocolate love. Oh, I love chocolate, but I never thought I'd get a chance to make some. Now, what exactly is this machine? This is, it's only a tempering machine okay. to keep all the amount of the chocolate that we make in one temperature so we can take the time and mold it into the molds. And how many scoops do I, do I need to make them? Three, four, as many that you like. And you said this is guilt-free, right? 100%. Where are we one, more, one more, one more, at okay. least, yeah. Excellent, keep it just inside. Plain or coconut, what do you want to start with? What, what, plain or coconut, plain or... Coconut, they said coconut. Coconut, okay. But just few, like three spoons. Okay, we can put that aside. And we can add a little bit coconut meat into that. So the coconut butter and the coconut. Yeah, excellent. Taste it. Good, and now this, this basically chocolate is ready to be molded. Yum, I love chocolate. I'm noticing that there's little, like six little hearts in the mold. I noticed that before. You can go ahead and fill it up all the way up, slowly, slowly, without leaking to the sides. Looking good. It's very calming, like almost therapeutic making this. It is, absolutely. So now we can put uh, this in the refrigerator? Yeah, to cool down before wrapping. So we put those in the refrigerator. Generally, how long do they need to be in the refrigerator before you take them out and wrap them? And About, I would say, like five, six hours. Usually I make it and I leave it overnight. I wake up in the morning and then it's all ready. Yeah, that's the two ounce almond bar. In the refrigerator, you can keep it for much longer time, but if you put it outside, you will be okay in low temperature, below 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So these are the two ounce bars, and these are the... And that's the cinnamon pecan, yes. Now, once those chocolate bars come out of the refrigerator and we wrap them, this is what the final coconut raw chocolate love bar looks like. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Tell me a little bit about this chocolate adventure. I went to my chocolate adventure in Belize, where the Mayan people sit, and that's where I start to make the chocolate. Pick up the chocolate cacao from the tree, open it, sun dry it for 14 days, roast it a little bit more, and grind it with stones. I had to do it just to be connected to what I do. The chocolate is cooled down a little bit, and this is how it looks like still in the mold after we pour it. And now we're just going to flip it and take those bars out of the mold. Yep. Oh. And then, look at it. It's all really beautiful. It's ready to be wrapped and shipped out to the stores. Ready to be eaten and enjoyed. Yeah. What flavor is this? I'm noticing... This one is the flakes. chili pepper, the double love chocolate. When we people have feeling of love, our brain creates a chemical which is called final atolamine. And chili pepper is also the way it tastes like, ah, like this. So it's cleansing our body. And there's a lot going on in this two ounce bar of chocolate. Well, let's wrap this beautiful double lovely chocolate up. Yes, so we're gonna just put the bar in the middle of the sheet, put the, the label in it. And here we go, the chocolate is right here. Very elegant look, as you guys can see. We're just gonna go to seal that bar. We put the logo, it's gonna be ready to ship out. I love chocolate, and yes. I bet you love chocolate too. So go down to your grocer, get online, do what you need to do, but get an exciting, raw chocolate love experience. It might change your life. Thank you, Shmoo. Thank you. Love you. Over the decades, the streets of Brooklyn have often made it to the big screens of Hollywood. For instance, in 1995, scenes from Spike Lee's Clockers was shot in the Gowanus Project. And in 1987, the character played by Nicolas Cage worked here, in this building, on Henry and Sackett. Now a coffee shop, it was known as the Camarieri Brothers Bakery. The classic egg cream contains neither eggs nor cream. It's simply chocolate syrup, fresh milk, and seltzer. 
but to many Brooklynites who remember this classic drink from their childhood, it's so much more. And you can get your very own here at Brooklyn Pharmacy. This is the Brooklyn Pharmacy and Soda Fountain, uh, located in Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn, uh, on the corner of Henry and Sackett. We've created a, a soda fountain in which we, we make egg creams and we make root beer floats and we make some of the classics like black and white milkshakes or, or black and white sodas. You know, there were soda fountains, there was shake shops. It's something that was prevalent in New York City and Brooklyn, really across America, you know, for the last hundred years. And they were in places like pharmacies or they're in department stores like a Woolworth or they were just on the corner. And over time, a lot of those have disappeared. Uh, but we're also doing new stuff, things like the pink poodle. Okay, next thing we're going to make is a pink poodle. Start of the glass, hibiscus syrup made from the flower of hibiscus. Not that much. Nice cold seltzer. Throw it almost to the top. Nice big scoop of vanilla ice cream. You just kind of press it on the side. You add the top. See what starts to happen is you start getting little bubbles coming up. Then you see what will happen is it'll make this start raising up a little bit. And that gives it the effect of being a poodle. <laughs> my name is Gia and um, my official role is Big Sister. Um, I'm also a partner with Peter, my younger brother. What's nice is that around 3.30, we do get a rush of, of children coming out of school and they like root beer floats, they like shakes a lot, and then a lot of them like sundaes with a lot, a lot of uh, whipped cream. Today I got my favorite thing on the menu and uh, it's called the soda shake and you pick a soda and you pick a flavor of ice cream and people think it's root beer float, but it's not, it's different and we made this straw right here, and we both drink out of it. The idea of the Brooklyn Pharmacy was to bring the farmer's market experience to an everyday marketplace. One of the things we do is with the vendors that we have that are local, we bring them in for tastings, and we typically have the tasting events on Sundays, where that's an opportunity for the community to come in and to, uh, to meet the food producer, and to speak about what they're doing, um, and then to taste the product itself. Because we have this great selection of baked goods. So one of the things we're, we're kind of getting into now, and we hope is the next kind of big thing, is, is retro homemade desserts. Things like homemade Twinkies. We have on Sundays a sticky bun Sunday, where we bring in fresh out of the oven sticky buns from Troll Palm in Park Slope. On Saturdays, we import um, donuts from Greenpoint um, from Peter Pan Bakery, which has quite a following. We don't have a kitchen here yet, um, so um, we, but what we do serve, so that there's a little bit of a balance, is we serve peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, black bean empanadas, which are all vegetarian, and then we have a soup that changes weekly that's also all vegetarian and all vegan. So you can come in here and you can actually have something very nice to eat and then have a treat. Okay, here at the Brooklyn Pharmacy, we're gonna make a chocolate egg cream. Glass, Hudson Valley milk. Always got to check the temperature of the seltzer first. Let it get nice and cold. It's got to settle a little bit first. Fox's You Bet chocolate syrup all the way down to the bottom. So just a little bit of up and down motion. Right, and so what you want to maintain is a nice white head on the top with a like chocolatey bottom. Um, usually when I come here I get a shake, but recently I have noticed that the best thing to get is just a normal egg cream. And the cool thing about the egg cream is if you wear a jerk shirt, a soda jerk shirt, you get a free egg cream. I didn't come into this being an egg cream lover, and I have to say, <laughs> I've actually become an egg cream lover and I have an egg cream almost every day. Well, the pharmacy is a very unique place because it's, you know, I think of it as sort of the, the, it's a corner store in Brooklyn and I think that it also represents, 
you know, it, it, a place where different things come together. It's a special place in that it offers a lot of people an opportunity to be here in their own way. Dedicated by the late mayor, Fiorella LaGuardia, the Brooklyn Terminal Market opened for business here in Canarsie in 1942. But before it was known as the Brooklyn Terminal Market, it was the Wallabout Market in Fort Greene. Open for business in 1801, the Wallabout Market was known as the second largest market in the world. When it finally decommissioned, many of the vendors moved to Hunts Point before settling here in Canarsie. Tina's Cake Fair seems to be one of the few Brooklyn bakeries still making the decadent desserts of yesteryear. You can also find some of your familiar favorites to satisfy that sweet tooth. Here at Tina's Cake Fair, 1568 Ralph Avenue in Brooklyn. The location has been here for 50 years and started by my grandfather and father and now it's me and my son. Uh, my son does all the uh, mixing, mix all the cake. I do all the fancy work. I'm a fourth generation baker at Tina's Bakery. I've been here working here for 20 years. Uh, I'm a graduate of Culinary Institute of America and uh, I'm the head baker here. My father and grandfather named the bakery after my older sister and the name remained all these years. When I took over, I kept the name because I feel that it, the name was very lucky. When I was still in high school, we, I used to come to the bakery, learn, learn the baking industry, learn how to make cake, learn how to finish cake, learn the system behind the counter. I liked the business and I remained in the business all my life. I went to college for one year and I uh, really didn't like it. So I said, I want to go learn the business. I first went to culinary school to learn a little fancier and different things. When I first started here, it was mostly uh, a lot more Italian and Jewish people. The neighborhood has changed, but we also changed with the times. We used to do a lot more bread and rolls, and now we've changed over to much more um, cakes and things like that, which uh, works better for uh, our customers now. When I was a kid, I used to come here all the time. I worked in the store when I was 12 years old until I was about 16, and uh, I always wanted to come back here and learn. I used to stay overnight with the bread bakers and learn how to make bread and things like that, and I, I really had a passion for that. It's in my blood. We specialize in giving people service and a very good product. People can come in the last minute and they can get a birthday cake within an hour. And that separates us from everybody else. We mix a lot of different cakes, red velvet, cheesecake, chocolate cake. We're famous for probably our birthday cakes, our most popular item here. A lot of production going on in a little tiny place like this. We open from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., but we have 24-hour operation in the back. We made the Caribbean fruit cake which is a delicacy for the Caribbean people. I teach at a little high school, in adult education at South Shore High School right up the block. And what I would do is go there and they would give me the recipe and we would try to make it there so we could perfect the recipe. Uh, so that was probably our hardest thing to, to get used to. We try to make it a family atmosphere. Of course we work very hard and sometimes it gets a little tense, but at the end it all works out perfect and everybody seems to be satisfied. We have uh, six people that work back here and uh, out of the six of them, five of them have been here over 10 years. And three of us have been here over 20 years. So we pretty much know every move we're gonna make. We never get into each other's way or anything like that. Uh, we, everyone knows where everyone's gonna be and what has to be made early. The best part of the bakery, I feel, is the smile we get from people. They, they come back, they say, oh, your stuff was very good. We enjoyed it. And that makes, us, makes our day, makes our week. My name is Clifford Brister. I work at Tina's Bakery for 25 years. Today, I'm going to do a 10 inch square cake. 10 inch square cake going to have a picture. I'm going to have pineapple and strawberry filling in this cake. You have to cut this cake twice because you're going to get two fillings. So I'm going to start cutting. Okay. I have the buttercream bag. So what you do, you got to make a ring around it for the filling don't come out as you're doing the cake. Now I put in the pineapple filling first. Put the pineapple in the cake. You even it out. Get it nice and smooth. Then I go put the top of the cake on. Then I put the strawberry. Make sure everything is nice and straight. Now I'm doing strawberry. Level it out nice. Now I'm gonna put the top on the cake. 
I have buttercream here. This is what the filling, this is the filling that the customer wants. So you take the buttercream, you smooth it around the cake, all the way around. Now this is what you call a comb. We're gonna comb the sides. That's to make the design on the side. You'll see as I'm going along. One, from one side. You see how the ruffles on the side? Okay, now I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna smooth out the top as I'm going along, you see. Now I have the picture, this is a wafer paper, just edible. All right, you put it on the cake, make sure it's nice, it become a part of the cake after. Now this is called a buttercream bag. We're gonna put the borders on, we're gonna make it look nice for you. See, when we start on the top, you do it nice and slow. This is the top. You put the border all the way around. Level it out. Then we're gonna go to the back, same way. And we're gonna come up the sides because it's a square cake to even it out, okay? We're gonna design the sides now. I'm gonna make loops, loops throughout. Nice loops. All right, we're gonna put the dots in there. Yellow dots. Now we're gonna put red in there. We're gonna go See, I got little dots of red. All the way around, the blue dots are on the top between each border, blue dots. And a little blue at the bottom. And just a little on top, we're finishing it up right now. Little yellow, okay. This is how it look when it's finished, nice. Thank you for coming out, watching me make the cake at Tina's Bakery. Well. That does it for this special episode of Neighborhood B. As you can see, Brooklyn is clearly full of great places to satisfy your sweet tooth. I just hope my visit will encourage you to check out Brooklyn's sweet spots for yourself. To learn more about us or watch past episodes, visit us at brickartsmedia.org BIT. You can also download episodes on iTunes and friend us on Facebook and Twitter. Keyword, BK Independent TV. We'll see you next time. Stay strong, Brooklyn. Beat has been made possible with generous underwriting support from the Brooklyn Cyclones. Tickets are on sale now. For information, 718-449-8497 or on the web at www.brooklyncyclones.com. The Cyclones are Brooklyn. Download this program's podcast on iTunes, keywords Brooklyn Independent Television.